Namo sir, we have uh, we have Harshini with us. We have Soni. We have Lavanya, and we have uh, Subhashri. And uh, we may expect two or more students in between. So just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, so uh, Harshini, Soni, Lavanya, Ranjit, uh, sorry, Subhashri. We have a trainer, Mr. Mohammed, with us who will be uh, taking you through the introduction of SAP FI and CO. So whatever queries that you may have concerning the subject or any expectations that you have, so you can you know discuss it uh, during the session. Uh, however, I would, uh, in order to maintain clarity of the whole demo session, just like the way you are on mute, you all can continue being on mute. So whenever the trainer is asking you something, at that point you can unmute, reply, and then go back to being mute. So that way we will avoid any disturbances coming from any one of us. So that way the sessions that is being recorded will also be of good quality so that you can you know, later on go through it and get more clarity. So with this moment, sir, uh, OK, we have Ravi also joining with us. Uh, so moment, sir, I'll leave it up to you. And I'll go on mute in case if you need anything, uh, please do let me know. OK, thank you very much, Sunny. Hi, everyone. Good evening. A warm welcome to you all. So let me just share my screen first. Yes, is it visible, guys? Yes, now we can. So welcome, everyone. So let me start first. <clears throat> so the training will actually be focused on SAP Finance ECC. OK, so let me just give give an introduction about me. Uh, my full name is Mohammed Shakir Sheikh. OK, I have a total years of nine years of experience. When in two years of experience, I've been into core finance domain and seven years of experience into SAP FICO. Currently, I'm working as a senior consultant, FI senior consultant, and I am certified from SAP. I have trained almost around more than you could say 50 plus students. Uh, because we have at least two batches going on with Zenfotech currently. So this would be the concurrent if we start on this batch, this would be third or fourth batch. Now let's get to the training agenda. Uh, let me make uh, uh, very clear. If you have any queries in the entire demo session, please ask there and there if possible. Or else we definitely have an end session towards the end part of the demo wherein we can go ahead and answer the queries. So let's go into the training agenda directly. First of all, the methodology of teaching. What will be our methodology of teaching at Zenfotech? Okay. So there is a three step principle that we follow at Zenfotech. The first is about the first step is about the concept or the logic. So first step, what we do is whenever we are taking any topic. First, we try to make the student understand the logic of that concept entirely. So once the logic is understood, then the second step that we follow is customization or configuration that is done by the consultant functional consultant in the background part. So there are two, you could say two screens for SAP. One is on the end user part wherein the end user works and one is known as the IMG screen. That is the implementation guide screen. This screen is where the configurations or settings or customizations are done by the functional consultant. And the third step we follow is known as end user testing means actually after doing the settings in the background, then checking whether those settings are correct or not validating those settings. So this is the cycle we follow three step methodology wherein first is the concept or logic. Second is about IMG configurations or customizations. And the third one is end user testing. Now, the the training agenda, the second point would be deliverables during curriculum, what all we would be covering. Third would be responsibilities that we expect from you all as students. Uh, fourth, we will go into introduction to ERP. Then in, we'll be introducing about SAP, what exactly is SAP. Then how many modules are there in SAP? And also about various versions, like we uh, take, if we take the example, uh, it's 6.0 now we are into S4 HANA. OK, uh, it was R1, R2, R3 we will be going into those details and also the architecture. What is followed the SAP system landscape 
okay how the system is designed or uh, the system layout in various organizations the types of consultants as we just know about sap consultant but there are various types of consultants in sap will be also taking you through giving you the overview about sap fico and very important the course content that we would be covering at zenprotect also we would be covering the types of projects in sap the job prospects with sap certification without sap certification as well and we'll also be giving you a short demo in the sap about the sap system now let us start the first question everyone uh, the the first question that comes up into each and everyone's mind is who can learn sap fico first of all let me uh, make it very clear anybody can learn sap fico the term fi stands for financial accounting and co stands for controlling that's the reason as you could say financial accounting is the blood of the organization so this is a very important module because without this uh, without this you could say the profit on loss statement and the balance sheet is not a we are not able to prepare but before that uh, let us i actually missed out let us uh, uh, try to know each and everyone who is in this forum as i have given the introduction about me uh, my qualification is mba financial management i have 7 plus years of experience into sap consulting 2 years has been domain uh, 50 plus students that i have trained uh, there are at least 2 to 3 batches that are currently going on with the institute as well so now let us start with each one of you uh, i would request each one of you all to give an give a brief introduction about yourself so that i will be able to understand how to go ahead and how can we engage further in this demo uh, let us start with okay let us start with uh, sony let us start with sony can you just give a brief introduction about yourself the background and the work experience yes, as well yes yes uh hi everyone i'm sony i have done my mba from 2020 and uh, currently i'm working as a associate content analyst uh, for money market i'm working and overall i work for financial markets and in the refinity i'm working currently from past one and a half year i'm working and uh, now i have decided like um, uh, i just want to explore more and uh, i want to learn something new and which helps my career and uh, then i decided to do sap so i have great I so you, so you have the work experience in the money market right yes sir it's like um, money market yeah we are working as like back end team who creates codes and instruments for great markets great. okay thank you sir uh, lavanya thank please you. Yeah, hi sir. This is Lavanya. Uh, I have completed my MBA in HR. Uh, I am present. I am working with Infosys BPM Limited uh, in the process of BCBSMN. Means it's an uh, regarding of insurance. Now I am interested to come with uh, SAP. Means with account side, I am interested to come so that I am uh, joining for uh, this training. Okay, great. Thank you, Lavanya. Uh, Subhashree, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, Hi. this is Subhashree. I have done my MBA in finance like few years ago. So right now I wanted to go for in the IT field. So that's why I'm looking for SAP people. So work experience after MBA? Do you have any work experience? No, I don't have any work experience. Actually, okay. I took a break. No worries. No worries. Okay, thank you very much, Harshini. Thank you. Uh, I completed uh, BCom layer 2019. Since then, I am working in TCS. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Which which uh, profile? Billing, uh, billing center. Billing. Okay. AR side, right? AR. Uh. Yes. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. Uh, and the last one, please, uh, Ravi Kumar. Yeah, hi. This is Ravi. I'm currently I'm working in Infosys right now, and I completed in 2017 MBA finance background and marketing. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was working in the marketing specialist. 
after that uh, i need to change the like uh, i need to work uh, with the it field sector mm -hmm. uh, that's why i decided to take the sap course okay in the particular finance background yeah okay great uh, thank you everyone for the introduction um, now actually i got a heads up like of who are who is from which background okay so as i said to you who can learn sap the big question okay so uh, anybody can learn sap see i have examples wherein one of my friends friend he was a computer engineer okay he he did the he did the sap fico certification and he also completed ca so there are possibilities only thing is that it depends on us how much time we are going to invest in learning that particular thing and how much that thing is important to us if it is really important then we will definitely give time and it's all about investing time for learning anything and definitely we have all those characteristics everything is there potential is there but the only thing is that we have to put in the hard work that is very important now let us get to who can learn sap anybody can learn the second point is basics of finance accounting okay so here in zenfotech what we do is that uh, we start with the basics of accounting as well we start off with the golden rules of accounting wherein we start off with the personal account nominal account real account we have actually uh, we take at least one or two sessions at the at the start of the uh, training wherein everyone is on par because the golden rules are very important and we also make sure that students are able to apply these golden rules while doing the transactions while analyzing the transactions so that is uh, how the learning will ha happen at zenfotech and we will also make you all understand from the business point of view how sap works because the sap is just a technology it all is dependent on a business process like you might have heard about p2p process o2c process okay r2r process so we make sure that each and everything is as per the business point of view uh, in this training as i said to you all you all would be learning from scratch like someone is from marketing background someone is from hr background we have trained students who are from different background as compared to financial accounting so one or two sessions will actually be focused on the basics that is the golden rules of accounting and how we are able to apply these accounting rules to each and every transactions so we'll make sure that everything is taught from scratch the only expectation from us as an institute is that your desire to learn if if as the saying goes if there is a, there is a way, will there is a way if you desire so definitely we are there to help you it all depends on you okay so this is how we will make sure that you learn at zenfotech now let's get to the next part what will you learn from this course okay first of all about finance in general and overview on day to day activities like i will give you an example if someone might have worked as an end user he might uh, billing he might know that uh, a bill is being created an invoice is being created how payments are happening so we are going to teach you all day to day activities that are part as an end user as well so it's just not about a configuration part but what does the end user do because if we don't know the end user activities then we won't be able to prepare those reports so we'll make we'll be making sure that we make you all understand and learn about the day to day activities also about the sap fico process as i said to you p2p process r2r process lust to dust process uh, o2c process these are the main processes of financial accounting now also we would also be making sure uh, what kind what can you expect during implementation as as i said everything will be from scratch so we'll be making sure that uh, we take you through all the phases that are uh, that are involved okay in the implementation project there is a business blueprint there is a realization phase there is a go live phase okay so we have a separate session for that as well uh, we will also be making you all understand the comprehensive view of the end user work and also how sap fico module is integrated with our other modules uh, stressing on this point uh, as we compare the other applications or software with sap sap is very much integrated with the other modules so what happens is that 
take for example a material uh, if there is a fi mm integration over here a material is being delivered to the mm team by the supplier automatically the accounting entry happens so this is the way sap is very much integrated with other modules and we'll also be making you all understand the importance of it uh, we'll be making sure that to giving you real time example because i am a real time consultant okay about the end to end implementation process and also about the finance workflow how it works now i have actually briefed you about the methodology of teaching the three principle that i follow first is about the concept second is about a configuration or customization and the third thing is about end user testing means validating whatever you have configured in the system it is correct okay and we make sure that training is as per the real world and industry standards because i being the consultant i will try to give you the real time examples as much as possible chapter wise explanation of all business scenarios wherein we have different chapters a new gl is a chapter accounts payable is a chapter accounts receivable is a chapter wherein we have the terms of payment as well involved then we have bank accounting cash journal so on and so forth we'll make sure that our teaching is as practical as possible so that it is replicating the real time scenarios step by step at the end of every sessions uh, we make sure that uh, the the videos are recorded and you are given access to the recording so that you can go ahead and again refer to those videos and do self practice now let's uh, what you get from zenfotech from us is that you get the study materials the access for 3 months 24 by 7 if you are practicing at 9 a and 9 pm 10 pm it's okay uh, you get that access from that access from zenfotech uh, we will also be providing you interview question and answers resume preparation assistance is also provided uh, we also take mock interviews okay at the end of uh, the sessions we take the mock interviews and we also provide the job assistance as we recently had a freshers opening okay uh, it was posted into one of our groups by the admin team wherein the starting package was around a uh, fresher package was around 3.6 lakhs it was directly conversation uh, our owner sunny had with the hr so so on and so forth so various opportunities available with us we will try to help you as much as possible now let's get to the exact content what is an erp okay erp stands for enterprise resource plan so what does an enterprise mean enterprise means it's a business it's a firm the resources that are used by the firm are planned by the erp so as uh, i think so almost uh, 50% of uh, the everyone is from management background we know what is the importance of planning so erp helps you plan your resources and if you are able to plan your resources then you are able to achieve your goals or objective uh, by optimum utilization of the resources so what is erp it is a suite of software applications that an organization uses to integrate and manage its business activities such as finance and accounting different departments warehouse procurement okay in order to achieve the organizational goals now types of erp systems there are two types of systems one is known as a decentralized system and the other one is known as a centralized system okay now let's get into detail what is a decentralized system this decent the data in this decentralized system is maintained locally at individual department or business area departments don't have access to data of other department take for example finance department will have ac access to only finance department's data not the hr department's data okay so on and so forth this is known as a decentralized system uh, these decentralized system examples are tally salesforce oracle okay now let's get to the other part the other system is known as a centralized system here data is maintained at a central location and shared with various department so there will be a centralized centralized erp system wherein all the data of the organization is stored at one point okay and this data each and every department is able to access this data so what happens is that as each and every department is able to access i'll just give you an example take for example the procurement team is able to access the data 
what is the cash flow or take for example what is the amount that is with the bank or the finance team so what this will help is that this will help the procurement team to plan it per, plan its purchase accordingly depending on the data available okay so each department can access information of other department as well and the best example for this is sap all data are interconnected now <clears throat> there are different erp products in the market uh, you might have heard about oracle ban microsoft jd edwards and marshall but more than 60 percent market share is of sap now let's go to the introduction to sap what exactly is sap now we know by now what is an erp uh, it is a software suite suite that is that helps to plan the resources of the enterprise now let's see what is sap many people also call it sap that's not the right word sap is a short form okay it stands for systems applications and products in data processing uh, by definition it's also known as the erp software as well as the name of the company so sap is the name of the company as well as the erp sap is a european multinational it was founded in germany by five ex ibm employees okay and it is headquartered and based out of waldorf germany now let's get to the different modules in sap uh, you might have come across this term modules quite often in sap if you might have researched on google if i want to make a career into sap modules is nothing but departments as you know each and every every organization will have its department financial accounting department it will have purchase department it will have sales department okay so department in sap are known as modules so there are two types of modules one is a functional module and the other is a technical module like uh, the uh, orthodox company which is working take for example 10 to 15 years ago when sap wasn't there a company had a department and an it team we used to call the it team wherein it team used to uh, do all the hardware software everything was there but now in sap as per the erp there are functional modules and technical modules like uh, the list that is given in the presentation now abap consultant comes into technical basis comes into technical functional module will have sd mm pp financial accounting human resource so on and so forth now sap r3 modules and integration you might have also come across the term sap r3 what exactly is this r3 wherein r stands for real time and 3 stands for three tier architecture now let's get into detail what is the sap r3 modules what are the different modules of sap you have financial accounting controlling asset accounting is a sub module of financial accounting sd mm pp so these are the r3 modules of sap now let's get into detail what is sap r1 r2 r3 uh, let's uh, go into the history of sap sap r1 r year stands for real time one stands for the first version okay when sap started its journey uh, r1 was the first version at it and it is known as the one tier architecture in which there are three layers presentation application database are installed in one system or server like the screen that you see okay this is known as the presentation layer okay there would be an application that would be running behind and displaying this okay presentation and there will be a database wherein the data will be stored so the presentation application and database are all installed in one system or one server then after some time sap upgraded itself okay as it started in germany okay first it was locally then it went international so it got a r2 structure okay uh, this is known as the mainframe version of software and it is a two tier architecture in which three layers presentation application and database are installed in two separate servers server one was known as a presentation server and server two was known as the application plus database after that sap upgraded itself and it brought in the sap r3 structure this is the last version in the ecc okay after that sap moved to s4 hana now as per s uh, r3 means real time three tier architecture okay 
and in which these three layers the presentation uh, the application and the database server are into three different systems or you could say servers now let's get into detail what is more important for us as the sap three tier architecture with sap r3 sap got into a new generation of enterprise software from mainframe computing that is client server architecture to the three tier architecture okay and let us go into detail a graphical representation that we have this is as i said to you the screen that you see my screen that you see this is known as a presentation layer and these are installed across many pc pcs okay and this is the screen on which the sap end user will be working then we have the application layer uh, this is where the this application processes the data and the data will be stored over here in the database layer in sap you might have have heard about tables so data is stored in the database layer through database tables okay uh, i'll just go into a brief history about uh, the database earlier for sap was of oracle now as sap has upgraded itself into s4 hana the database now is of sap itself so now sap is not dependent on oracle earlier while it was ecc sap was dependent for the database on oracle company now let's get into a system landscape a uh, system landscape is nothing but how the servers are you could say installed or the layout of the servers in the system like take for example anyone who is working on an end user if you take an example of any software okay he is working in the live environment that environment is known as a production environment that environment is known as a live environment or a production environment so sap has generally three stages of system landscape one is a development server one is uh, the quality server this server is known as a quality server or a test server and the third one is known as a production server development server is where various programs are developed by the technical consultant ab consultant abap consultants wherein we give the logic to the abap consultants to develop the particular programs after that those programs are moved or you could say transported okay through a particular tr request we'll go into that detail in the later part and they are moved to the quality server in this quality server what is done we check we as functional consultants we will check whether these programs are giving the correct output or they are fulfilling the purpose for which they have been created we will check it if everything is okay then it this change will move it to the live data or the production server okay so this is the system landscape this is the general system landscape many companies will have uh, uh, the system landscape might be four stages five stages depending on the criticality of the company okay like take for example uh, uh, a medical a company which is dealing into med medicines okay it might have four stages of system landscape there might be a development server there might be a quality server there might also be one more server known as a validation server than the production server so it depends on industry to industry and the criticality of the business now let's get into detail try to learn about the type of consultants as i said to you there are two divisions one is a functional consultant and the other one is a technical consultant now functional means those consultants which have an expertise on that particular function okay and technical are the people okay who do the programming who do the administration for the database now let's get into functional consultant now what the, what is the role of a functional consultant or responsibilities uh, as i said to you we as functional consultants we will be speaking with the client we will be evaluating the needs of the client we do the data gathering okay so we are the main focal point in any particular sap project because we have to interact with them the abap consultant wouldn't interact with the client so we are the linkage we will interact with the uh, clients we will get the, all the requirements we will give the technical special uh, you could say technical language also convert it and we will tell uh, the abap consultants okay as per his logic as per the database tables logic uh, what program has to be created so the the technical consultant wouldn't be directly speaking with the client so we are the you could say the main focal point over here so very important over here is that 
we also have we also need to have good communication skills uh, as i said to you assigning fi financial specification documents okay or we also prepare the test scripts we also do the testing as i said to you in the quality server here okay the testing is done we do the testing okay and then we pass on the test uh, the test case uh, if it is okay then it is passed to the live data because we cannot go ahead and disturb the live data if everything is not working fine now let us go to the next part that is known as a technical consultant technical consultants are abapers as well as basis consultants the role of abapper is to create programs okay as per the requirement uh, there might be z reports uh, that are customized reports as per the client okay and the role of basis consultant okay they will install the sap software database provide technical supports and uh, these are the consultants who will give you the user id okay the accesses and they will monitor the sap's the sap system's performance the performance of the system is monitored by the basis consultant now let's get to the next slide overview about sap fico so we'll get into the content what exactly is fico as i said to you earlier fi stands for financial accounting and co stands for controlling financial accounting is also known as external accounting okay and co is known as internal accounting okay uh, why financial accounting is very important because this is statutory means no matter what happens each and every company has to prepare its balance sheet and profit and loss statement for one particular financial year so that's the reason it is known as external accounting or external reporting purpose as per the government's rules okay and co is controlling this plays an important part in the management's decision making uh, as we will be learning about controlling more controlling is see there is a normal logic each and every company wants to increase its profits the profits can be increased by increasing the sale or reducing the cost so for reducing the cost controlling module plays a very important role wherein we are able to identify the units which are underperforming and we can go ahead and reduce the cost automatically once the cost is reduced the profit will increase of the organization now roles of sap fico consultant we have already covered this okay uh, we will we also provide one more important aspect over here is that functional cons consultants responsibility is we also provide the training to the end users okay and we also sort out the day to day queries of the end users okay we also prepare the business blueprint now let's get into the sap fico course content the course content that we follow at zenfotech so the unit 1 okay this is apart from the basics in accounting that we will be covering this is the syllabus apart from this we will be getting you to learn from scratch what is accounting how to prepare a pnl how to prepare a balance sheet everything will be done first one or two sessions depending on uh, uh, the understanding of the students and then we will get into this sap fico contents okay first is the enterprise structure then definition uh, defining the enterprise structure as well as assigning the enterprise structure to the company code then we have the global settings part wherein we will be defining the fiscal year variant the word variant might be new to you variant means setting fiscal year setting financial year setting okay then we have the posting period variant or posting period setting your period period means month in sap so sap has its own language wherein we follow the calendar month period means it is equivalent to the month then we have the field status settings or field status variant then we have the posting keys posting keys are nothing new but the debit and credit that we do in accounting these are ref, uh, these are replicated through particular two digit numeric keys in sap then we have the tolerance group then we'll be learning about document types because uh, in uh, while we do the gl posting there will be a different document that will be posted when we create a vendor invoice or a customer invoice or a customer payment or a vendor payment a different document will be used a different document type will be used 
now the third unit will be covering about the general ledger accounting the chart of accounts it is nothing but the list of gl accounts then we have the gl master data master data is very important because first we'll have to create the master data then only the transactional data will be possible then we'll be learning about different types of documents we have a parking document functionality in sap then the sample document then the recurring document we'll be also learning about foreign currency translations how we'll be able to translate the foreign currencies take for example there is a particular customer of our company who is outside of india and making a payment in usd or dirham how we are going to replicate that into sap system okay cross company code transactions as well uh, we'll be also learning about the terms of payment particular session we have about the terms of payment uh, wherein we'll also be learning how a vendor will also become a customer about that concept as well now we are into unit 4 unit 4 is all about accounts payable accounts payable means supplier vendor side okay everything that is involved with the vendor whether it be creating of the invoice whether it be uh, making the payments to the vendor the master records everything will be covered in accounts payable we will also be learning about the in ap we will be learning about the p2p process procure to pay cycle okay and we also would be learning about the fi mm integration over here and uh, there is a special gl transaction known as down payment you might have heard about down payment we make down payments while buying cars while buying flats okay while buying bikes so we'll also be learning about the down payment process whether it be in accounts payable or accounts receivable now let us go into the next then we'll also be learning about the bank accounting how to prepare the bank master data how to prepare the check lots check lots are nothing but if you rep replicate in the normal layman terms it would be checkbook okay we'll be learning about the automatic payment program because a company has to pay n number of line items on a daily basis or on a monthly basis so such huge payments you know sap has provided a special functionality that is known as automatic payment program also known as app okay uh, we'll be learning how to there are six steps in app how to determine the bank payment methods in company code okay then <clears throat> let's get into accounts receivable in the accounts receivable section we will be covering all those details that are part of ap same okay it's like uh, we are we company are in the middle on the upstream side we have a supplier and in the downstream side we have a customer so we'll be learning about how to define customer account groups whether a customer is a domestic customer or foreign customer uh, we'll learn how to prepare customer master data okay uh, the down payment process also would be covered in accounts receivable okay as well as the payment terms we have a special topic in accounts payable that is known as dunning dunning is nothing but sending reminder emails and uh, letters to the customer okay reminding him about the payment that is due but not is paid so we have a separate session for it that is known as a dunning session we'll be learning about that then we have a sub module the other sub module is asset accounting asset accounting in itself is very huge okay but we will be covering each and every aspect of asset accounting how to define a chart of depreciation okay how to assign it to the company code we'll be learning about asset classes we'll be learning about the different types of depreciation methods the straight line method written down value method how to define a depreciation key how to define multi level depreciation methods will also be taught to you in class how to define the asset class asset class is made up of about account determination screen layout rules and the number range intervals okay and how the integration will happen with the gl how the posting will happen automatically take for example you post a, uh, you post an asset sale okay uh, you you incurred a loss on a part of uh, by selling a particular asset how the depreciation will be calculated everything will be taught to you in the class in the integration with the gl account topic now uh, we'll be also learning about the asset master record because whenever we are going to buy any asset from a company's point of view we need to have a master data of that particular asset in the system okay so we'll be learning about that 
we'll also be learning about different types of documents for depreciation posting and asset posting known as asset document okay uh, we'll be learning about uh, the end user transaction what transactions the end user uses in sap world okay we'll also be learning about the asset explorer asset explorer is actually a, a, a t code or a transaction code wherein you will find each and every aspect of the asset when this asset was purchased which gl this asset is assigned to this asset is following which depreciation method whether it be written down value or the straight line method each and every detail the plan depreciation the posted values everything okay also we'll be learning about the retirement of the asset when the asset would be retired what accounting entry will take place in the system in the financial accounting we'll be learning about the foreign exchange how to do the settings the background settings uh, as i said to you we'll be learning about cash journal as well there is an integration point of cash journal with bank accounting we'll be learning that as well then we will be learning about taxes particularly gst goods and service tax we'll be learning about that we'll also be learning about extended withholding tax uh, which is mostly followed in our country india we'll be learning about that as well then uh, in the unit 8 okay we'll be learning about controlling so it in itself is a big topic wherein we will be learning the fico integration how the integration happens between financial accounting module and co module we'll be learning about those things how to define a controlling area uh, we'll be learning about the profit center accounting the cost center accounting and the cost element accounting uh, there is a linkage between fico cost element serves as a cost carrier from financial accounting to controlling module we'll we'll be learning about how to create master data for cost center for profit center accounting and cost element accounting as well as we'll be learning how to post these transactions or so line items as well as various reports that would be beneficial for us so this is about master records profit center okay now let's uh, yeah the ninth topic is very important integration between fi sd and fiml as i said to you at the start only uh, sap is a software which involves a lot of integration so two major integration points for financial accounting is sd and mm module sd stands for sales and distribution mm stands for materials management or you could say purchase department so we'll be learning about we'll have a separate session okay for fi mm integration and fi sd integration how the movement of goods happens from mm module to the financial accounting how it moves to the uh, to the customer after also involved with the production planning team as well over here so we'll be learning about that then we'll be learning about the sap fico reports how to create the financial statement versions uh, month end reports year end reports line item reports gl uh, gl balance vendor balance customer balance reports so we'll be learning about those reports as well so this was about the contents that we at zenfotech will be covering in the entire syllabus uh, this is just uh, just a gist but many more things depending on your queries because Uh, everyone is from a different background so at the start only we'll be trying uh, to start from scratch and uh, make sure that you all understand the sap language or you could say the accounting language as well we'll make sure that now let's get into the next portion that is the types of sap projects we might just know what is uh, uh, we might have just heard about sap consultants but there are different types of projects that are involved in sap okay so predominantly there are four types one is an implementation project one is a roll out project one is an upgrade project and one is a support project so it is classified into four project let's start with the implementation project the implementation project will follow the asap methodology okay asap methodology where in the first step would be project preparation second is business blueprint third is realization final preparation and go live and support so before a project starts there is a project preparation once we we usually functional consultants we speak with the client and project preparation after uh, gathering all the requirements of the client what exactly the client wants 
in the SAP system, how he wants his own business to be reflected or replicated in the SAP system. We try to gather all those details. Then we prepare a business blueprint. Business blueprint is very important. It is known as a reference book, or you could say the Bible of the entire project, wherein each and every time it is being referred to for each and every action. Then we have the realization wherein the configurations, customizations takes place in the background in the IMG screen. Then we have the final preparation means uh, we train the end users, train the end users on different, uh, you could say, different concepts of SAP and many more things. And then we have the go live. Final preparation will also cover the cutoff, cutoff activities, cutover activities as well, uh, like the data to be migrated from non SAP system to the SAP system. Take, for example, a company is earlier working on Tally, now it's, uh, it wants SAP to be installed. So here the data has to be migrated from a non SAP system to the SAP system. Then we have the go live and support and go live. When the go live happens, uh, there is a hyper care scenario wherein for one or two months, depending on the agreement, uh, uh, the, the company which has implemented the cons uh, consulting company, which has implemented the project will go ahead and give 24 by seven technical support to the particular company which has implemented and then there is always room for improvement continuous improvement depending on the contract between the companies then let's get into the second project that is known as support project now this project comes into existence after implementation project once the implementation happens go live happens sign off is done project is completed then support consultants come into picture in the support project the end users all will need always assistance because they are new to the system uh, they will always face uh, take for example someone is posting a vendor invoice and he's not able to post it so immediately the system will throw an error but the end user doesn't know what is exactly going on in the background might be the period is closed or the books are closed for this month or the past month he's trying so there are there might be various scenarios so immediately the end user will go ahead and raise a ticket on various ticketing tools like Ivanti, ServiceNow, Jira. These are ticketing tools. And these ticketing, uh, these tickets would be assigned to the support consultant. Then the support consultant responsibility start. He will go ahead and get in touch with the end user, speak with the end user, okay? And try to analyze, do the RCA, okay? Root cause analysis of the error and try to resolve the error as soon as possible make sure that the business is running smooth so this is the objective of the support consultant okay through a ticketing handling tool okay and then we have so these are the rules accept the ticket analyze the ticket document the ticket and solve the ticket these are the responsibilities of the support consultant now let's get into the upgrade project upgrade project is also known as a migration project uh, take for, uh, as I said to you, there was R1, R2, and R3. These are the different versions of SAP. Okay, so there was ECC 5.0, 6.0. Okay, so depending on this, take for example, a company is on ECC 5.0, it wants to move to 6.0. This would be an upgrade project. Okay, and it is also known as a migration project. Okay, and the fourth project is known as a rollout project. Now company has upgraded or implemented SAP and wants to roll out in a different country. Just take for example, Tata Motors. Tata Motors is operating in India as well as in Bangladesh. What happens? Uh, SAP is installed for Tata Motors in India, but now Tata Motors has decided that it wants SAP to be rolled out. Okay, rolled out in uh, Bangladesh for, for the Bangladesh entity as well. So this type of a project, it is known as a rollout project wherein a company is already in SAP, it already has a SAP system, but it wants to roll out for a different company code in a different country. This is known as a rollout project. Now, let's get to the very important aspect of job prospects in SAP FICO domain. Okay, first of all, our syllabus, uh, as we have observed, our syllabus is the vast syllabus as compared to different institutes. Okay. So normally we take at least more than 60 hours learning sessions happen. That's what we have observed on an average uh, for past five to six classes that we have observed. Uh, once 
we upgraded the syllabus so it's more than 60 hours of session now let's get to the job prospects in sap fico okay uh, you can work as a sap consultant okay work as a support consultant you can also work as a business user or an end user okay so this syllabus this training okay syllabus whoever completes this syllabus he will be able to work as an end user as well because we will be covering the end user activity part as well business user is also known as a power user power user means a subject matter expert expert you could relate to that a subject matter expert take for example someone said insurance field there is always a subject matter expert in insurance field who is known as an underwriter i think so so like a power user business user is like a power user and we have a support consultant support consultant will always be supporting a project uh, after go live and sap consultant it is the implementation full cycle implementation rollout project depending on the availability so these are the different job prospects in sap fico domain now let us get to what exactly is the importance of sap fi certification now i'll uh, just give you a normal example uh, there is a trained candidate and there is a trained and sap certified candidate okay now a trained candidate on an average a fresher will get a package of around three to four lakhs while what we have observed through the market is that a certified guy will at least get a package more than five lakh a fresher will give get a package more than five lakh that's what we have observed so this sap certification what is the importance of this certification uh, this certificate is globally recognized means if you go in uh, go into any part of the world go into europe go into middle east or go into america this certificate will be valid this is a global certificate this certificate is provided by sap company itself so this is a validation from sap that this person is certified by us so he is genuinely a consultant you could take in that sense so most companies would prefer the sap certified candidates always preferred and study shows that certified candidates fetch better salary as i said to you a recent example was uh, fresher got 5.5 lakhs package as compared to trained who got 3.6 lakh package so that's the difference almost all major clients okay prefer sap certified candidates what exa why exactly all clients will prefer sap certified candidates very important is that take for example mine is a company i want to install sap i go to a consulting firm i tell them okay i want to install sap sap is very good but uh, who all would be in your team who would implement sap so i as a client will definitely want an sap certified candidate a candidate who is certified from sap to go ahead and do the implementation so that creates a trust the the certification creates a trust in the mind of the client so so that is the difference why sap certification is important as compared to trained as well uh, you also you will also have the opportunity to travel abroad for certified candidates with decent years of experience so this is about the SAP's importance of SAP FI certification. Now, we'll give you a brief about S4 HANA as you might have heard about S4 HANA. What exactly is the S4 HANA? As I said to you, ECC means Enterprise Central Component and S4 HANA is something that is on cloud, okay? Uh, uh, ECC database was Oracle. So SAP was dependent on Oracle but for s4 hana the database it is of sap itself so sap doesn't need to go anywhere so it's its own technology and there are different formats in s4 hana on premise that's desktop based on cloud that's cloud based and a hybrid model okay uh, one more important aspect over here is that all uh, all companies as per the sap regulations as per the news uh, have to move from SAP ECC to S4 HANA by 2030. Okay, but very important aspect over here is that the prerequisite to learn SAP S4 HANA is learning SAP ECC. Very important over here because in S4 HANA there is hardly any change. There's just a new concept of a business partner, or you could say asset accounting. Certain ledgers are added over there. Apart from that, apart from that. 90% is almost ECC. Okay, 
i myself i am a ecc certified consultant okay so very important is this aspect but the base is sap ecc if you learn sap ecc automatically there is there are hardly any changes uh, that are applicable for s4 hana now let us go into a demo session i'll take you i'll give you a navigation tour okay about how does sap look like so this is sap system okay so once you log into sap if sap is installed this is the sap logon icon we have to click over here then give the user id and password okay give the user id and password i will take you to the end user screen first we'll look navigate to the end user screen and then the functional consultant screen or you could say the img screen so here we are once you log in into sap you come on this screen so this is a screen this is known as a command field command field wherein you can give command to the uh, system from this field in sap you might have about have heard about t codes t codes are nothing but transaction codes t codes means the shortcuts as we use in excel similar way in sap you have t codes these are known as shortcuts to going any to going to any particular transaction screen okay so this is the screen here you have on the top menu this is a command field uh, this is a save icon over here if i want to log off i can log off from here uh, then i want to search anything i can do it from here then if i want to open any new session i can go from this icon creates new session maximum sessions that would be created in sap would be six sessions at a time not more than six sessions that is the limitation of sap and this is the easy access screen this is the screen wherein the end user works okay so this is about accounting you will find financial accounting over here in accounting you will find financial accounting financial supply chain controlling so our focus will be financial accounting and controlling this will be our focus so this is the end user screen now let us navigate to the img screen the full form of img is implementation guide the t code is known as sap project reference object spro so this is the sap reference img this is a screen wherein only the functional consultant or the technical consultant will have access the end user won't have access to the screen the end user won't have access to this screen okay so here we are so this is the screen that i was talking about this is known as implementation guide you will also have a command field over here so these are the list this is the list of menu that is available in the img screen if you see over here you have logistic this is one particular module you have financial accounting we are here this is controlling okay you have plant maintenance quality logistic sales and distribution so this is a screen for which the access would only be with the functional or the technical consultant the end user won't have access to this screen so all the settings as i said to you the first step concept logic if you understand the logic then we do the settings the settings are done in this screen if you go into details over here i'll just navigate you all through financial accounting this is financial accounting see accounts receivable will be covering financial accounting global settings gl ar ap then we'll be learning about bank accounting over here and also about asset accounting so these would be our core topics that we would be covering okay so this is about sap and i'll just let you know about the t codes okay the shortcuts just a minute
T codes are transaction codes. These are actually shortcuts. So I'll just it will be displayed on the right hand side. I've given the command of displaying. My system is a bit slow because this is the demonstration education system. Real time SAP is super fast. So see the last four alphanumeric keys OBC4. This will be the shortcut to this particular transaction screen defining key status variant. I can navigate to any particular transaction screen through a shortcut or through the path. The path is this. I have to go in the system this way. Okay, so this is about the navigation of SAP. Now let's come to the last part that that is about questions. Now, guys, uh, you can please ask queries if you have not understood anything. If there is any confusion, now we can go ahead and do the question answer session. Yes, Sunny. So um, I would request the participants to ask your queries, you know, or your expectations. If you have understood, if there is this, if the style of teaching, you know, is good or we need to work on some areas. So if you let us know that, it will be great before we wind up. Anyone? Um. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Like I just had a call. Um, sir. Uh, now. Even few of us having experience in different areas. So when we are doing a set, so will our experience add to this uh, course, or like will they consider us as pressure again? So if we are, if they are considering us as a pressure again, again it's a uh, it's a small problem for us because we have experience again. If we want to start our career as again as a pressure, and uh, it would be some difficult for us, right? So can I know no the like expectation of us like okay, no worries. I'll just give you my my own example. Okay, as I said to you, I had two years of okay. domain experience. Okay. After that, I did my certification as and I started my SAP uh, journey. I'll just give you an example. I was okay. uh, on a package of around five lakhs. When I started my SAP journey, I was a fresher in the consulting field. So now you will be a consultant. See, there are two screens. One is the end user screen, and one is a cons uh, IMG screen or the consultation consultant screen. So here you are now an expert and you have more knowledge. But in that particular consulting field, you would be a fresher. That's what you start a journey. Okay, but your domain experience would definitely be counted. It would be counted to know your expertise. Okay, but in consulting field, you will be a fresher. That is for sure. Okay. So everyone who starts a journey in consulting like, will definitely. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. So then, uh, like I understood your point. Then what about the package we will get? See, uh, we are getting it's in. We are getting something now, and again we have to see. Not every can. Not everyone can invest on certification because. Uh, it's mm -hmm. somewhat uh, bit difficult for everyone to invest there. So who are just taking training and we are having experience. So we'll have a, we can expect some good packages other than like 3.6 better than that or like 4, 4.5. Can we get that much? See, uh, the 3.6 that I quoted, that's the average that I have observed. Okay, and 5.5, that's the average. It can be anything more depending on the quality of that particular candidate it can be a possibility uh, that a particular candidate has very good communication skills okay and uh, the manager is impressed the interviewer is impressed they can definitely give you more that is also a possibility so it depends on the total package the company is going to get from one particular candidate i have given you the average it can also be 4.5 and 5 also but one thing's for sure Whoever is thinking to start a career into SAP consulting, what I mean to say consulting, you will just face the issue for one year. Hmm. After one year, if you now, if you go on Google and try to do some research, you'll get to know now the tech, the most in demand, okay, uh, software uh, skilled people are SAP, SAP guys now because 
market has more requirement and there is there is less number of skilled labor in sap okay so you will just face the difficulty once you are fresh after one year that's the rule of it after one year what happens automatically uh, you will get a, get a definitely a hundred percent salary hike that is for sure that is for sure see i'll just give you an example uh, a person actually was working on uh, documentation that is known as sen process okay sen process is one of my friend's friend uh, he was working on the documentation process of sap that is known as sap enable now he got a package of uh, around 3.5 after one year now he is getting a package of 8 lakh rupees so it depends on the candidate how you upgrade yourself it all depends on you yes hope it answers the question yes thank you sir it's very satisfying uh, sir you. one more question i have like uh, i it's not like a question it's just like uh, uh, we are expecting i am expecting some tip from you because we are i'm i'm working so i have to manage both work and also i have to uh, invest my time in sap also so how can i do that like uh, how can i give time i mean how many hours i have to spend here because see, if i don't have work so i can give full of full time so yeah. as i'm staying in pg i have to see my personal things and also i have to work and also i have to give my best in and what i am learning today so how can i manage that see uh, Actually, uh, very important very important it's all about time management see uh, i would say one thing when you're joining the course how important is sap to you that is that has to be objective if if it has that importance mm -hmm. what you could do is when you start your day off you could practice one hour daily on a daily basis that's what i suggest to my all students that at least you have to open the sap system and practice at least for half an hour on a daily basis and on weekends and on weekends try to increase it so it is all about how much you are going to invest in yourself and one thing is for sure whatever time you are going to invest it is not going to go wasted because you are going to get a long term return on it okay so very important for you is that you have to make your timetable accordingly that at least i will give half an hour or one hour daily on a daily basis no matter what happens and one more one more thing guys i actually missed this point uh, the term sap okay the p over here for me stands as a trainer for me stands practice and practice and practice so sap is all about practice i'll just give you an example everyone might be working on microsoft excel sometimes he might have come across v lookup okay some of the other formula and after sometimes when he is not using that particular formula that particular formula will go off his mind so he will forget it so similar way with sap if you are not practicing on sap you will forget it so for that's my advice for each and every student at least on a daily basis no matter what happens half an hour at the start of the day or half an hour before going to bed that could be a possibility okay yes any more questions thank you so much thanks um, anyone else guys please ask if you have any, yeah, yeah. any queries any doubts yes yeah yeah actually i just wanted to know the functional part and the technical part which you elaborated in the demo uh, so is it like um, it's uh, in the course which you're conducting uh, technical part is also included see uh, also? sap is classified into functional and technical consultants okay yeah so uh, functional means departments um, yes uh, that sales department financial accounting department yes. okay uh, mm department and yes. technical means the people who are engineers yes. who are engineers they will they will do the programming they will uh, monitor the performance of the system so yes. those people who are technical people like the engineers their focus is the technical consultant yes. they only know the technical language they won't know the functional language but we okay. as functional consultants we are the link between the client and the technical so we are the focal point over here okay so okay. definitely uh, we will be learning certain tables that are essential technical tables i will tell you all okay. how to how to know the technical names in sap mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. also take take you all through that as well but we won't be so, learning that that is a different module altogether 
okay so in depth uh, we should not know about it only no, no. the basics which we need for the sap uh, like for the um, uh, everything to work on we need that much right yeah functional right? means financial accounting and co module everything that you need yes the talk. functional so we have to cover it like uh, as per the module but yeah. i'm talking about the technical um, which uh, you showcased uh, mm -hmm. that uh, modules uh, in depth we don't need to no, go no, through it right if, if you know like who is uh, take for example there is a, a new team member who has joined in the company and you are a senior and yeah. the user id access has to be generated you need to yes. know who is going, who is that responsible person who can generate it a basis consultant so this is okay. like a norm, normal thing that you should know that will mm -hmm. help you to get your things done on uh, on a uh, faster basis you could say okay okay yeah anything yeah, more it. yeah is it like the um, this is going to be a new batch right so the timings will be like uh, at this time or in the morning hours i suppose at the time uh, it, it, it it depends on sunny like depends on the the batch how it's going to be designed it is all about okay. uh, how sunny is going to plan out so we'll make okay. sure that it is as per you could say the majority or or, or about the group depending okay. on that yeah yes thank you anything more guys harsh kumar anything from your side ravi kumar sorry uh, no no nothing and uh, one more thing guys uh, i forgot to sorry. mention that i forgot to mention one more thing is that uh, at the end of the training at the end of the training we will be providing you uh, implementation project document as well so that will go into depth each and every aspect of a real time project we have a particular uh, implementation project with us which has been implemented by us so we will be providing you to those dedicated students who we feel that yes uh, they are actually very much they they have the potential and they want to go ahead and they are dedicating themselves to learning sap and we will be there to support you we will be providing a real time project as well to those students yes Yes, go ahead. Any questions more before we close for the day? Lavanya, do you have any questions? Yeah, hi, sir. Um, you said that uh, it, uh, it will be certified in SAP. It was given by the institute or the it will give by the means uh, outside of the institute. See, certificate. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. yes I'm sorry, yes. I'll. Yes, any yes. uh, What when you do the course, uh, like you know, uh, from the institute, uh, end of the class or at the end of the course, you can request for the course completion certificate. That is what you will, you all will get, provided you all want it. And for those oh. who are planning for global certification so there, there are exams that you have to take. So that is a different story I think. right so, but course completion certificate will be given to anyone who wants it okay so i guess uh no more questions uh Mama, sir, so we can wind up i guess right guys Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Sir. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much, everyone, guys. for taking your thank time you. out and joining the session. Thank you, Mama, sir. Thank you so for your much. Time. Take thank care, you. guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye, guys. Thank you all.